When the Granary Club finally closed its doors on the 11th of August 1988, a subculture of Bristol's music scene had vanished. The club had introduced Bristol to a range of musical talent that had never been witnessed before. Now all is left is an upmarket restaurant, luxurious flats and stories of days gone by. Earl Reed remembers those glory days. The Granary Club, as a, a rock venue, uh, started Christmas 1968. Monday nights, rock nights at the Granary were successful. And uh, as such, we actually needed more bands to play. And so as we got into 1969, um, more bands were needed. And now uh, we had light shows at that time, brilliant, I, you know, and they looked great at the Granary. Um, they kind of worked around the country with different, different bands. And uh, they, they would come back and say, oh, we've just been working with a band called Yes, and you ought to book them. Or um, I've just seen a band called King Crimson, they were on the same bill, uh, you ought to book them. And, so we did, you know, and other bands got in touch with us. And in those first few uh, years of the Granary, some terrific bands played. There, there were bands that played, and then within weeks, you'd see them in the charts. Mark the Hooper played, Atomic Rooster, um, Gary Moore. As, as, as Gary Moore played there, and he wasn't young enough to come in. By the mid-1970s, the Granary Club became the talk of the town. We had Uriah Heep, we had Bartley James Harvest, Genesis played Judas Priest. It just goes on with all the, all, all the major bands of the time. Despite its great success right at the 70s, Ulri decided to give up his position as club manager in 1982 to join the BBC. Interestingly, one of the directors in the 70s was Tony Bullimore, who went on to become world famous um, for, shouldn't say, but his, he seemed to sink his yachts quite a lot. Um, I think as the club ran down, it, it sort of attracted a, a different crowd of people. You think, well, it must have been a public health hazard and it was only a matter of time before they closed it down. It, it really was. It was diabolical, but it, it just never mattered. It was just such a fantastic feel when you were in there. It was just a brilliant place to be. You could put all that to one side. The music itself then changed from being very broad into, into singularly more uh, heavy rock continuously it became a heavy rock um, club mainly uh, a sort of bikers audience after the granary uh, I, I went on to work for the BBC for some time as a presenter on uh, local radio and then unfortunately I, I was very ill and, um, and, and during that time, and when I recovered, thankfully, uh, I, I had time on my hands. And I, I was clearing up uh, my little office, with, and I came, I came across this old folder which contains all the booking sheets for the years that I was booking the entertainment at the Granary. And uh, when I went through, I realised that there was a history here. And first of all, I started by just listing out, um, typing out properly all the names of the bands that I played. And here there are little notes on how much we paid them. Um, as, as you run down it, you find, uh, oh look, a super trap there, 50 pounds. Wow, that's great. So I thought, then I thought, this could make a book. It took me four years uh, working to uh, get all the information, the photographs, the stories, uh, all the information from different musicians and different artists that had worked there, from management people, and put together uh, the Granary Club, The Rock Years, uh, as a book which was published by Broadcast Books uh, here in Bristol. Some 20 years have nearly passed since the closure of the Granary. Despite this, there still remains local interest. You know, if you wanted to sum up the Granary, uh, you can go to the, the website and uh, just quite recently uh, someone has written uh, to, to tell me how much they, they, they thought of the Granary. Um, John Fiddler, uh, the front guy for if you can have a front guy in a duo uh, for Medicine Head, uh, left a message on the website here. Uh, and he says, uh, always a pleasure to play there. And what a wondrous place the Granary was. Uh, the last time we played there, which um, I've made a note, was Thursday the 28th of April, 1977. Uh, he was playing with Morgan Fisher from Mott the Hoople. He said, he said, I do remember we had a ball that night with a typically warm and responsive Granary crowd. He says, the Granary always lives in my mind, one of the best British club venues to play at that time. Can't get better than that, can you? 
All the best to you, always. Recorded and produced by Joe Haynes in January 2007, the narration by James Ewan.